Can we switch to the computer? seeing here is essentially the Sanchra ship, which is uh, uh, something that we're particularly proud of, and it turns out lends itself really well to the technology that we're about to demonstrate here. Right. And so, Tony, you probably want to talk a little bit about how this works. Sure. So, um, so what we did is we took the, um, the base assets, the geometry and the normal maps and the textures, um, and then we used a technology called tessellation, which Heller mentioned which can actually generate geometry from the base mesh, but it was never actually there in the first place, and it does that procedurally in the hardware. And it generates details that can receive light and cast shadow, which the normal mapping, which Helber mentioned, can't do, because that's just a flat surface. Yep. And so as you can see here, if uh, we turn off the tessellation, and you look at, say, the silhouette edge against the nebula, that's, that's what that carrier looked like before we went to work. Yeah. Right? No. So, yeah. This is what it looks like current, yeah, I mean, yeah, as you saw it there when you switch it off, this is what it looks like today. And then we switch back on the tessellation, you know, pay attention to the fin where the cursor is, you can see all this detail being generated. So this detail was already there in the normal map, but there was no way for us to generate the actual really geometrical detail, but now we can. Right, so, and give you a little, maybe a little sense of scale of yeah. what's going on here. Yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, turn the, uh, the wireframe right. on. Yeah. These are the, uh, the, the triangles, the individual triangles that make up the geometry that is uh, composing the Sancho ship here. But if we turn the tessellation on and let the hardware generate um, the detail, um, it's a little bit different. Yeah, in fact. Yeah, exactly. As yeah, you can see, you know. <laughs> you want that? Um, to give you a, a little flavor for that, there's, um, there's 500 million triangles being generated every second. That's right. 500 million. <laughs> um, and this is run on a, a GeForce GTX uh, 560, yeah. which as it turns out, is the most commonly used graphics card in EVE. So this is not the craziest high-end unattainable thing. This is the most commonly used graphics card um, in EVE. Yeah. Um, just taking advantage of some of the latest technology. So yeah. let's, let's take a look at some of the other um, capabilities that we can do with this. <laughs> And it's important to note that, uh, you know, of course, uh, our tech, one of our tech artists and, and one of the modelers that built the ship had to come in and do some tweaks and adjustments uh, to make it look this good. So here uh, you see an asteroid, and what's really interesting about this asteroid is that it actually really looks like an asteroid. <laughs> and if we would switch off tessellation, or let's switch off shadows first. Yeah, take the shadows off first. Yeah. And you can see the huge difference that it makes to have those shadows and how the contrasty shadows give it a look of an asteroid in space, right? One of the, the cool things about having the tessellation, so let's turn off tessellation yeah. and then turn the shadows. And look at the, how harsh and jagged yeah. those shadows look. They don't yeah. look right. Yeah. They look like just triangles that are black. Yeah. But if you turn the tessellation on, yeah. you get all the subtle detail because there's real geometry there to receive light and then cast a shadow just as it would in space. Yeah, it's very important to understand that, that you know, the actual, ge the actual geometry that we're generating is also taking part in generating the shadow. So the shadows perfectly match. Yeah, so we have, you know, the ride the asteroid cam here. So why don't we go ahead and uh, take a look at this one in wireframe, just to give you another sense of just how many triangles here we're generating. Yeah. 
in fact, there's so many triangles there that it looks almost solid. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, we're generating hundreds of millions of triangles every second, entirely procedurally, by the power of the graphics processor. And this is what's going to give that kind of next level of detail um, and fidelity to the, to the world. And here, uh, Ian is uh, playing with the actual tessellation count. And this is a pretty cool feature, because this allows us to achieve scalability in our graphics cards, right, Tim? That's right. So um, that slider that he's, he's fiddling there, if you have a super high-end DirectX 11 graphics card, you can you know, turn it up to 11, so to speak, um, and get literally more polygons than there are pixels on the screen. <coughs> If you don't happen to have the super ultra high end graphics, I mean, card. and those are the things that will impress your girlfriend, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't have that same level of hardware, you can slide the slider down maybe to something a little bit more moderate um, and still experience a lot of that benefit without having to have, you know, $10,000 worth of graphics hardware in your PC. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's move to a different view of this real time scene now where we uh, look at the uh, ship and look at some other possibilities that we've been exploring in this demo. So, as you may have seen in uh, Torvis' uh, talk during the keynote on EVE, he was talking about mining in asteroid fields and uh, rings around planets and just having a lot of asteroids on screen. And we've really never done that in EVE. So we decided to put together a demonstration of what we could yeah, do. Okay. And so you're seeing here, you should talk about this, Tony, and explain a little bit the detail that's going on. Right, so what we have here is, a, is an asteroid field with um, uh, asteroids that are real geometry. Yeah. They actually really will collide to the ship itself using the actual surface of the ship as opposed to some bounding sphere, which you're probably familiar with, you know, bumping people off of station and whatnot. Um, in this case, these asteroids not only can collide using a technology at NVIDIA called PhysX with the, with the ship, um, they actually can shatter. It's called uh, destruction or fracture. So as the, the asteroids hit and the impact, you'll notice some of them will break, they'll split, um, they can be affected by light, the, re the resulting impact, and then send another piece of debris flying off, hitting another asteroid. So uh, you know, mi mining belts is going to be pretty interesting, I think, with uh, you know, the level of detail that we're going to get out of, out of mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing here that we can show you, which is that if you actually have active uh, 3D glasses, this is amazingly cool. Because the interesting piece is that when we start doing tessellation, you actually get even more depth in your 3D experience. Yeah, yeah. and of course it's always fun to have asteroids flying at your face. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so we think this looks pretty promising, and, and that's why we brought it here. I want to take this opportunity for you to give a round of applause to the people at NVIDIA that worked on this with us, specifically Ian Canton. So the last piece on this, of course, is, you know, should we do it, right? And to, to talk about that, we kind of need to frame what is it that we would need to do. And doing some calculations based on our experience now building this model, uh, the work of upgrading the engine and then renovating most of the content would equate to be about five man years. So in Scrum terminology, it's the equivalent of one team for a year. So that's the thing that I put now in your hands to form your opinion on, and we'll be watching the forums and seeing how you respond. <laughs>